What's up everyone? Welcome once again to the channel. It's your boy Luis Bertelles and today I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in the world of pageantry and that is Q&A. Oh my god, we are in for a treat because all of the delegates of Miss Universe Philippines 2024 just um, visited a locality here in the Philippines where they will be having some competitions, some challenges, and they'll be creating a lot of content. And because of that, the local government put together a press presentation for the delegates, you know, to announce their entire schedule, basically. And as you can expect from a press presentation, the press got to ask them some questions which in a lot of ways can be very close to a Q&A segment. So we got to hear the delegates, you know, handle the questions, interact with the media, and just, um, you know, try to give their best to show what they have to offer in terms of the pageant. So I'm going to use that as a way to analyze their Q&A skills. I know that quite a few of the girls were uh, able to speak during this engagement. So I'm going to give you my comments, opinion, feedback, critique, you name it, okay? So let's make sure that this is a juicy and fun video. So you better watch until the end, bestie, okay? One more thing, if you enjoyed this type of content, go ahead, drop a like, a comment, subscribe, share this video, follow me on social media, and all of the things that support me as a creator so I can continue bringing you quality content. All right, let's go get our live stream for the ladies and let's start playing. Let's see what they got for us. I actually want to be an example to my kids also on how to, you know, like chase your dreams. Even though I'm 33 years old, mm -hmm. I mean 32, 33 in the uh, few days from now. Yes, I actually don't want to announce that I'm, I'm turning 33 <laughs> in the next few days. I want them to learn that when you have a dream, it doesn't matter how bumpy the, the journey is. As long as you want that, you can get that as long as you have the determination in your heart. And yeah, you can achieve it. And I hope I'll be the first ever mother who will represent Philippines in Miss Universe Philippines. Are you Miss Universe stage this year? Thank Grabe you. Ka. Okay, so Ms. Maribelis, it's actually one of the first times that I hear her speaking. So I'm very happy with her comm skills. I think that it's very casual, very kind of like friendly. It's like she's talking to a friend, joking a little bit, but also the delivering her message. It's a strong message. I like the fact that she is a mother, that she's very open about it, that she's about to turn 33. And she's, you know, like, oh my God, you know, 32, but almost 33. Like, that's cute and relatable. Now, my question for you guys, this is not about her answer. It's about us. We have to interact now. Do you think it will be clever for Miss Universe Philippines as an organization to crown someone that comes from the recent changes in eligibility and inclusivity at Miss Universe, especially after the leaked video, the viral content that went, you know, crazy everywhere on social media where they were saying that these girls coming from inclusivity can place, but they cannot win. So knowing that piece of information as an organization, should Miss Universe Philippines crown someone who is closer to the previous prototype or go the inclusive route? What would you do if you were part of the board of directors of Miss Universe Philippines? Let me know. All right, back to the girls. Okay, maayong hapon. I am Simon Biabersolo from Radio Pilipinas Reporter. I'd like to ask who are the candidates from Mindanao here? Okay, maybe I would like to ask Davao City to speak in behalf of the candidates of, of, of Mindanao. Um, Nakatagal din na hindi nababalik sa atin ang corona. I, I think... Um, Nosebleed! I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. Kung... North Cotabato. So, I, do you believe that this time you're confident na magbabalik sa atin ng corona this year's Miss Universe Philippines? Grabe. Yes, and why not? Oh. Short and sweet. Maybe I should also say my sentiments a bit that I'm very happy that we're actually in Mindanao. I have, I'm sure everyone who has been around me today are very, they know how how homesick and how happy I am that I'm here in Mindanao. I even wore Tao Sog right now just because I'm so happy to be in Mindanao. Um, Mindanao has always been filled with different cultures and all and that. And I'm very happy that the Miss Universe uh, organization was able to come here and highlight that, you know, from the moment we entered, they could already see and 
with the media that they brought, you can all the entire Philippines could already see that we bring a lot of color into our identity as Filipinos here in Mindanao. And if that is the, how Mindanaoans are, I think they have more than enough reason to deserve the crown to represent the Philippines to the beautiful universe. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's actually same vibes. Very conversational, nothing too crazy. This is clearly not a Q&A section, right? A Q&A segment is rather just the girls talking to the media. But I do like her wittiness, you know? She came in with a really short but pungent, like really um, impactful answer to his question. And then she was able to develop it. She is a little bit redundant in the things that she said. Like she goes back and forth with the same idea. But again, I don't feel like she's trying to deliver like a QA and a moment. She's rather just trying to make it short and sweet and kind of cute and relatable for everyone. And she is from Mindanao, which is where they are at the moment. Um, so she's just trying to, in a way, speak to her Kapabayans, if that makes sense. Magandang hapon po, um, Brian Kapondong from SMNI uh, Davao. I would like to address my uh, question to your candidate from Cebu. Hi, hi ma'am. Good afternoon. Hi, Ms. Cebu. Uh, Hello, can, my hi, ma'am. Can you tell us about your uh, platform and uh, what, uh, why it is important to you? Oh. Well, uh, my hapon, kaninyong tanan ako dey si Chris Hanson. Yes, I do represent Cebu, but... Uh, Mindanao is not new to me because uh, usabud ko ka Mindanaoan. Kaya ako ang mamagpapa. Proud yung kaayo magikan sa Lanao del Norte. O sige, give me maglaag the report sa Mindanao. No split ako. But, uh, going back to your question, no? I am <coughs> one of the oldest candidates for the Miss Universe Philippines in 2024. I am actually 34 years old already. But I'm not a mom and I'm not married also. I think it's very important <laughs> that. <laughs> I think it's very important that we should disregard limiting women because of their age, not just um, because of their marital status, not because of the situation they are in in their lives, but for someone who was told that I couldn't be someone I wanted to be because I was already in my 30s, I had to question myself a lot. I had to question my life choices if I was picking the right things for myself or was I wrong for going against the grain? This is the perfect platform for women of different ages, of different um, status in their lives, that in whatever career you are in, at what, whatever dreams you have in your heart, it's never too late or you're never too young to chase it. Grabe. You know what I really love Chris's um, com skills? She is a pro. I mean, let's be honest. I cannot really comment on the you know, Tagalog or Bisaya part. I don't know what she spoke there, but I, I can't. I can't. Nosebleed, okay? But I can tell you about the second part where she was uh, speaking English. And um, first of all, I really like how Chris really makes sense when she speaks. I love the fact that she's so aware um, and like she's so serious, but at the same time, not scared to make fun of herself. Like she's like, I'm 34 already. I'm one of the oldest contestants in this batch, but I'm not married and I don't have kids. And then... There's a little, you know, like giggle with the sisters and like, because, <laughs> you know, here in the Philippines, there's a little bit of social pressure, but she is not making it a big deal. Actually, she's empowering herself. So I really love that. Um, and you know what I really love about Chris, to be honest, is that she is Filipina. She's super eloquent, great communicator, and she has that Philippines accent. You know, sometimes we have like great speakers, great communicators. Girls who come from abroad, so it's expected that they will, you know, be fluent and eloquent because they live in English countries. But here in the Philippines, you know, she has kept that essence, but still perfected the, the master of the language, if you get what I'm saying, I guess. Anyways, I love her. Let's move on. Thank you. Next is Miss Noreen Igonia from Net25. Um, I would like to ask a question from Miss Tainta. Oh, Stacy. Miss Stacy, wow. Miss Stacy, is it your first time to join MUPH? Oh, for, yes. My own happen po. I'm, yes. I'm, <laughs> Stacy, you already said that. <laughs> you already said oh, that. It's my first time to join MUPH, yes. Um, but you've joined 
pageants before? Before MUPH? I joined one national pageant before, yes, but MUPH has always been a childhood dream. So it is absolutely surreal to be here alongside my sisters and the organization. And I haven't had the chance to see the Philippines within a national pageant before, so this is all still very new to me. And I'm very grateful to be here. To Grabe, Stacy managed this like a pro. I really don't like it when the media starts pushing for, you know, to bring up the past of the contestants in other pageants and whatnot, because we know that not all pageants are so friendly about this. Like some of them don't really want to, you know, talk about previous history. So for Stacy to handle it this way and be like, yes, I competed before without naming the other pageant, but also remaining respectful to that previous pageant because it's part of her experience. It's part of her journeys. They, they gave her a platform to begin with. And now she is at Miss Universe Philippines and I'm sure she's grateful for that. But also you can't really look back and like disregard what the previous pageant did for you. So I don't know. Sometimes the media, I don't like these questions, but anyways, let's see what's next for Stacy. So, um, Miss Stacy, how would you compare your Miss Universe journey here, or Miss Universe 2024 journey to your uh, for, uh, to the former pageantries that you've joined? Grabe ka. Again, with the same question, comparing the previous pageant to the new pageant, uh, I don't like it. I, I like that Stacey's handling it like a pro, but you can clearly see the discomfort in the organizer's face. Look at Jonas, look at Chamsey, Voltaire is looking, <laughs> everyone's looking down basically. So he's like, why would you do that to the contestant? Just let her talk about her current journey. See, like, they're uncomfortable. Wow, well, you know, I was actually speaking to Direct Borge about this not too long ago. Shout out to Direct Borge. Miss Universe is a whole different beast, right? It is such a powerful, prestigious, prolific platform. And to be here is to represent more than yourself. This is not a journey for one, but a journey for mm -hmm. all. And every time I'm on this stage, I wear my family across my heart. I wear my mental health community across my heart, as well as the women's prison ministry that um, my family has taken under their wing. I represent them each time I go on this stage. Miss Universe Philippines, has an incredible reach and it champions the diversity and the beauty of the Filipina. So this is absolutely, although it is my, my second national pageant, I am still pinching myself at every opportunity because Miss Universe, I would say is the absolute, it's the paramount. It's the, the paramount. I love it. And I am grateful to be peeking in front of your very <laughs> eyes. I love it. I mean, Stacy is a pro, is a pro. I mean, technically speaking, let's be honest. The question was about the previous pageant compared to this new experience. And I think that Stacy, on purpose, like purposefully, she only spoke about Miss Universe because that's what the media should be focusing on. Like she is there for a press presentation about Miss Universe Philippines, why they keep bringing Binibini Filipinas. Let them rest. They have their own batch of candidates this year. If you want to know about Binibini, go and talk to Binibini. Um, I just don't like that the media sometimes makes it uncomfortable for the delegates. But Stacy handled it like a pro. Technically, she didn't answer fully the question, but I don't think that she should have answered it because it could backfire. It could seem like she is trashing on her Bini family and now, you know, for Miss Universe Philippines. And it's just not a good look. So I think that Stacey did the right thing. And congrats, because you nailed it. Thank you, Miss Stacey. Next is Sir Dennis Arcon from Brigada. Good afternoon, mga magagandang beauty queens po, no? Anyway, uh, kami nagpapasalamat, Sir Yuri, na kabilang uh, yung SK bilang venue ng gagawing national costume competition. A little pasilip lang po, no? For Miss Sharkao, ma'am, good morning, uh, good afternoon. A little pasilip. Meron bang inspiration or kwento sa likod po ng uh, susuotin niyo pong national costume this coming uh, 28 ba yan? Thank you po. Um, yes. Um, hi everyone. Maayong hapon. I am Richelle Di Ocampo representing the beautiful island of Tregao. And yes, uh, my nat national costume is actually um, consists with um, 
pearls because um, Siargao is actually um, known as the surfing capital of the Philippines. There's a wave, so um, you can see my cost national costume this coming 28. Um, there's a color um, blue and like um, a crab. Uh, I would just say that one. So it's not a surprise anymore, but <laughs> but not just that. So I think you will be like I'm thinking. You will thinking. <laughs> You were thinking something, but it's not just a crowd, but there's a plant also that is very famous <laughs> in Chargao. I'm so sorry, I'm so overwhelmed. So yeah, I think that's all. Baka mas po ko na lahat. My girl is struggling the same way that I struggle when I have to kind of understand Tagalog. The nosebleed is real. Very cute attempt. I think that there was a lot of um, um, and kind of like, you know, beating around the bush to get the message through. But I also don't blame her. We have to understand uh, for a lot of these candidates, although English is very normalized here in the Philippines, by the way, if you guys are watching from abroad and you come visit, you can, for the most part, get away just speaking English here in the country. English is not everyone's first language and not everyone has the same level of, um, you know, like comfort speaking it. So sometimes I feel like she might be losing some vocabulary here, missing some words um, that I'm sure that if she was able to just say it all in Tagalog or her local dialect, uh, she might have been able to just say it a lot more fluently. At the end of the day, it's kind of there. She spoiled a little bit the idea of her national costume, but she still got the idea through. Thank you, Ms. Shergao. Next is Mr. Dave Billiones from RNJ Network. Assalamu alaikum. Magandang umahapon po sa inyo lahat, brother. And welcome to the province of Sultan Kudret. So as we all know, the Miss Universe organization opened uh, all the candidates from the Filipino community all over the globally, all over the world. So my question is, Sultan Kudret, we all know as a melting pot, of a uh, different culture. We have tribe people here in the province of Sultan Kudarat. And our uh, um, tagline is Sultan Kudarat Sikatka, meaning Sikatka, simbolo ng katahimikan at kaunlaran because we all people here united. So, as we all know, representation and diversity are important aspects of the Miss Universe pageant. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, how do you plan to use your platform if crowned as Miss Universe Philippines to promote inclusivity and celebrate diverse culture on a global scale? So um, I'd like to give that question to uh, Miss Florida, Filipino community. Thank Grabe. You. Okay, so I'm going to see how Miss Florida is going to handle this. I'm just going to say this is the type of question that sometimes when the media is writing these questions, I feel like they, they feel like they're Miss Universe judges already and they're giving you like a complex, intricate question and like how are you going to, you know, use the platforms? I don't know. I don't feel like this is like a press presentation type of question to ask you should just ask some that are more relevant for you know why the delegates are in your locality and what are they going to be doing and what are they looking forward to and stuff like that but they get into this like i'm going to ask you like such a complex question about why she should be the next not just miss universe philippines but like miss universe already so he's like i don't know let's see how many florida did i'm sure she dropped the microphone Hello, everyone. My name is Matea Mahal-Smith, representing the Filipino community of Florida. Obviously, I'm very happy to be here in Sultan Kodarat. It was such a warm welcome and so many, so many smiles, a great experience already. In terms of your question, coming from abroad, I really want to showcase that being Filipino is not confined to just the Philippines. We celebrate our pride in all places of the world. I think the other Filipino communities can agree with that as well. And as you know, I am, if you don't know, I'm an Afro-Filipino. So for me, being able to represent the Philippines on the Miss Universe stage is all about representation for me. For those who feel that they aren't seeing the morenas, the people with disabilities or people born with congenital disorders, because I was born with that too. So it's not just about, just about myself, but those who I can carry on because I believe in the phrase that you can't be what you can't. You can't be what you can't see. And I want people to be able to see themselves in me on that Miss Universe stage. Thank Just you. Just like as expected, she dropped the microphone. She ate the microphone. She delivered absolutely everything. I like that Matea is like very eloquent and she delivers a lot of substance every single time, but it's still not forced. I mean, 
she stumbled a couple of times, but she also recovered beautifully. And that's what makes it so conversational and relatable to me. Otherwise, if it was perfect every single time, it just feels like something that she learned and rehearsed. And it's really not the case. She's a great speaker. I mean, as I said earlier, some of the girls that come from abroad, they speak English as like first language in their countries. And Matea is one of them. She comes from Florida, so USA. Um, but one thing that you can't really take away from her is the fact that she just has a gift when it comes to her skills um, and her communication. So, Thank you, Miss Florida. Last question from Sunstar. Hi, it's me again. I'm Ali from Sunstar Davao. And also, I'd like to hear to uh, one of the favorites in the competition, which is Miss Atisa Manal Probably. from Quezon Province. <laughs> one of the um, favorites in the competition, Atisa Manal. <laughs> he, he called her out, like, come on now, you're a front runner, you're going to answer this question. <laughs> um, hello, Miss Atisa. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Um, you were able to get a crown in an international speed before. Um, How's your preparation coming to Miss, U Miss Universe Philippines, comparing to your previous um, international, uh, like, is there any changes or you, you were able to stick to what you um, nakasanayan mo? Before I went to Miss Universe Philippines, I haven't been in the pageant industry. It has been six years. So one of the biggest preparations I did, um, Sultan Tugrat is actually part of it. I went back to my pageant roots. I started judging hosting pageants just to get a feel again of how it is to be in pageants, to see the girls perform on stage, and just to be on the other side of the table, like judging um, the girls that are in the PD pageant. So I am very happy to be back in Sultan Kudarat. I was here last November for a Kalimutan festival to judge Miss Sultan Kudarat. And I think that's one of the biggest things in preparing for this pageant, just getting back to my roots because it has been a while since I've been on a stage getting judged by people for how I look and how I perform. <laughs> you know what? I actually really like this answer from Atisa because it makes her look so human. Like, guys, I've been away for over six years, so I had to get myself back into these waters and start, like, judging and hosting and attending all of these events because Atisa, we don't really hear much from her Unless, I mean, I remember that era when she started like making a comeback and appearing a little bit more often in these pageants and stuff. But other than that, you wouldn't hear a lot from her unless you're following following her actively on her social media. Um, and I like that. I mean, Atisa seems to be at ease. She seems to know herself. She seems to know what's the message that she wants to put out there. Um, I actually saw some people sharing this particular video, like a snippet of this video and saying, you know, oh, the Q&A is kind of shaky and this and that. But the reality is like, this is not a Q&A portion. The girls are not expected to deliver impactful answers. They don't have a time limit. She's kind of having a conversation with the, with the person asking the question. And I believe that she gave him the truth. You know, it, I'm, I'm getting myself into this arena again because I haven't been here for a while. So, you know, Bear with me. It's hard to be judged all the time. So we're doing what we can. So I like it. I think Atita, Atisa did a good job. Thank you. Thank you so much. And for this one, I mean, we have Miss Bakuor. Victoria, come on now. Drop the mic. The v -V -V. Hello, Victoria, good afternoon and welcome to the province of Sultan Gudarat. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to be here. So I just want to ask, as a second timer in Miss Universe Philippines, how does it feel mm -hmm. being Honestly, back? So... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, how does it feel being back here again? In Miss Universe yeah. Philippines Miss Mall. Honestly, it's such a different experience compared to 2021. You know, we were locked into a bubble for a few weeks, uh, but at the same time, even though we were so close to each other, we still couldn't see each other so often at the same time. We had a lot less events as well, so I didn't have the pleasure of meeting a whole lot of media, meeting all of the fans and supporters. So it really is a different experience. I feel like so many people tell me, I be veteran ka na, sanay ka na sa pageantry world, pero parang newbie pa rin ako, because the experience is just so different. Uh, and I'm, I'm grateful for the experience that I had be, back in 2021 and the, ex the lessons that it taught me. Uh, I think there are some ways that I can apply it here, but at the same time, it's a whole different ballgame this year, especially with 
you know, all of the accredited partners, all of the traveling that we're doing, as Voltaire said, all of the amazing sponsors that we have. It, it really is just a whole different universe. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm, I'm grateful to be here. I knew that she will eat. I knew that she will eat and she ate. That's what she did. I mean, I love the fact that V was able to create this contrast, you know, because I asked her about how does it feel coming back to Miss Universe Philippines that she was able to create this comparison between the first time, which was just still in the middle of the pandemic. I mean, 2021, although things started in 2020, 2021, we're still fully in it, right? So she's able to take us back to that moment and then kind of compare it with what's going on now. And very in a very subtle way, I know that she is kind of, you know, throwing flowers at all the travel that they're doing now, the sponsors, she mentioned those things. So V is a very smart woman. She knows how to police the organization by bringing up, you know, all the good things that they have been doing now and how things are so much better now and how the sponsors are incredible. That's what a beauty queen does, right? So it's, she's very strategic, she's very smart, and she's doing it in a very subtle way. I also want you guys to notice how she made sure to insert Tagalog in there because the first time that V... Uh, competed that was one of the things that people will give her a hard time for this like oh she doesn't speak the language she's you know from abroad and whatnot she's not really one of us well this time around victoria made sure that she kind of like brands herself in a very filipina way and yes i come from abroad but i'm still filipina and i have been here for a while and i speak the language and i you know know what i'm doing basically so this was really good as usual oh, oh okay Mama J. Thank you so much for that wonderful statement. <laughs> um, you know, there's, uh, it's not only national costume here in Sultan Kudarat, mm. if I may say. We are also doing the runway challenge, one of the most important um, I'm so parts excited of the for competition. That. We're also doing a fashion show Ooh. featuring um, Inaul fabrics and with, uh, local designers. And also to let you know, I mean, this information should not be out there, but Sultan Kudarat will be the opening of Miss Universe Philippines. Ooh. What do they mean by that, opening? Um, and there was a question about, when you look at the ladies now, from the, the ladies who joined in the past, there's so much more inclusivity mm -hmm. and all. I mean, and daming mga against inclusivity or against all the changes, but the only permanent thing in this world is change. And with change, there's always contradictions. There's always challenge. But Miss Universe will always be here to stay. Grabe. You know, I actually really like the fact that Jonas made that point about basically how hard it is sometimes to embrace change. And especially as an organization who has to, you know, evolve over time and progress and kind of be more inclusive and open doors and create more opportunities for all of these girls sometimes it's hard because they get so much pushback from the audience sometimes it's pageant fans sometimes it's just the general public sometimes it might be like societal you know rules and norms um but of course change is never easy there's a lot of pushback and people are not always open-minded right so i think that at least in my perception, Miss Universe Philippines is doing the right thing. I think that regardless of what's going to happen at Miss Universe, they will, they will select a candidate that will represent the Philippines beautifully, that will represent the girls in the country, that will be able to start important conversations, that will be a viable um, brand ambassador for the organization and the sponsors. So that's my hope for this year's edition, regardless, again, of what, what's going to happen at Miss Universe Philippines. So let me know who do you think is the right person for that job that I just described in the comment section. There you go, everyone. That was pretty much it when it comes to the Q&A portion of Miss Universe Philippines 2024 during the press presentation. I hope that you guys got to hear some of your favorite delegates to kind of... Uh, see what they can bring to the table in terms of their communication skills. Um, let me know in the comment section your thoughts about them. I will be reading you, of course. And who do you think is going to be a threat during the Q&A portion during the final night of the pageant? Thank you for watching, guys. I will see you very soon with more content. So make sure that you are subscribed, turn on the notification bell, and uh, follow me on social media to stay tuned about all things pageantry. Love you and see you soon. Bye now.